It's interesting, if we drink coffee, it makes us anxious. So it must just be caffeine being a problem, right? But actually, if we start diving in, there's some very interesting stuff if we drink green tea. And it's not just a few little mechanistic things. There's a study that took a look at over 42,000 people, and it was pretty wild, so we're gonna dive into that. But it's exceptionally powerful if you're in a fasted state. And we'll talk about that too. Let's go ahead and jump in. I put a link down below for 10% off from Timeline Nutrition. Timeline is a very interesting company that is taking something called urolithin A. Now, urolithin A is a compound that our body ultimately kind of synthesizes from pomegranates, but most people don't actually have the ability to synthesize it. So it's interesting. Urolithin A helps promote what is called mitochondrial biogenesis and helps promote overall mitophagy. Now mitophagy is where mitochondria are essentially consolidating and getting stronger. It's like autophagy of the mitochondria. So in the world of longevity research, urolithin A is really, really becoming an interesting point for researchers. So anyhow, I put a link down below for Timeline. They have a shake version, they have a simple capsule version, they have a berry powder, like a packet you can just put with water, super easy. Use code THOMAS10, save 10% off at timelinenutrition.com. So that link is down below in the description. Okay, so this study, very interesting. 42,000 Japanese people, okay, and they took a look at how much green tea they were consuming associated with their overall levels of what they considered psychological distress. Now, there's a lot of different pieces here because if you've seen some of the documentaries on like Japanese that are overworked, they, a lot of places, especially like in Tokyo and the big cities, they work a lot, right? So there's a lot of psychological stress. Now, when you look at this piece and you look at how green tea associates with this, it's very interesting. They found that the more green tea that people consumed, the less their overall psychological distress was. Subjects that consumed five or more cups of green tea had a 20% less chance of having psychological distress. It was attenuated 20%. This is huge. Now for me, I love observational data because it tells us, okay, there's something going on here. Definitely, 42,000 people. But I'm also a mechanistic guy because it gets me excited and the mechanisms are interesting. So then we dive in. Now, what's interesting, green tea has theanine, but it also has caffeine. You would think that caffeine would make us anxious. And in a lot of cases with coffee, it does. But theanine is very interesting. Theanine has impacts overall on our cortisol levels, but on a number of different things. There was a study that was published in the journal Nutrients that took a look at this specifically. They found that theanine reduces the subjective stress of a cognitive stressor. What that simply means is that if someone were to stress you out with something very cerebral, not like literally just having you get chased by a tiger or something, but like you're gonna get fired, you'd be able to have less subjective stress response to that. You'd still get stressed out, but the subjective sort of perception of the stress might be a little bit better, right? Which perception is everything. Interestingly enough, they also found that three hours after consumption of theanine, cortisol levels were lower. That's a pretty long tail effect, meaning if you have some green tea in the morning, that theanine might be having a positive impact on your body and your brain throughout the rest of the day. Very, very intriguing stuff. But what's cool about green tea is the double whammy effect. Okay, the EGCG, which is the primary catechin that is in green tea, is also a neuroprotectant from a neuroinflammatory side of things. So what that means is that you're ultimately kind of protecting your brain a little bit from neuroinflammation, but then more beyond that, it has what is called an anti-apoptopic effect. Okay, apoptosis is a pre-programmed cellular death. Okay, so cells are supposed to die at certain points. Okay, and sometimes they die because they are dying for the preservation of other tissues and other cells. Meaning, I'm a wasted cell, I'm gonna cause a problem, I'm dysfunctional, so I'm going to go through apoptosis and have a premature death. Sometimes you want that to happen, sometimes you don't. Sometimes the programming is out of whack, so it's programming a cell to die that shouldn't die. So when you regulate apoptosis and have anti-apoptopic effects in the short term, you can be preserving neuronal cells and preventing premature neuronal cell death. So that has a huge effect on our anxiety and a huge effect on how we function. So, okay, this is cool. Green tea, drink it. But if you're fasting, because I mentioned that in the title, 
This is pretty interesting. So there was a study published in 2021. It was a meta-analysis in the journal Nutrients. Took a look at over 1,400 people that were fasters, people that like to fast or intermittent fast. They found that almost unanimously, they had reductions in anxiety, reductions in depression. They overall just, you know, as far as subjective scores were concerned, but they also, believe it or not, had lower BMI. No surprise there, so they lost weight. But the most important thing is all without decreases in fatigue. What is going on here? I can only speculate, right? For one, people probably just feel good when they're not eating. Yeah, and that's going to have an effect on stress, right? Like you're not stressed out about certain things. It's just easier. But if you want to get mechanistic, it probably has something to do with ketone formation because ketones are going to inhibit the inflammatory effect of the NLRP3 inflammasome. So basically they inhibit inflammation, which could protect your brain from inflammation. But additionally, you tilt a little bit more towards that gamma aminobutyric acid scale. So the brain has less in the way of like excitatory responses hitting it. So it comes a little bit more relaxed. It's literally tilted more towards the relaxed side of things. Things. There's interesting evidence now with GPR 41 too, which might be like the brain's ability to modulate itself unbeknownst to you to different stressors, kind of in an autonomic nervous system fashion. Very interesting. So what I look at is like, okay, cool. I'm a big fan of consuming green tea first thing in the morning or during a fast anyway. Now I'm finding like, wait a minute, if I don't have my green tea, I feel a little bit more anxious. I actually get a calming effect. Sure, it alerts me because there's 40 milligrams or so in caffeine, but I'm actually getting this calming effect. Now it makes sense. So if you haven't tried it already, try swapping out your coffee for green tea just for a little while and then try it fasted and see if your stomach can handle it, how it makes you feel. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.